I couldn't say goodbye. Her death was like part of me had died. After the Tangiyan, I spent many weekends going back, going back just to cry. Just in my car by myself and go. No, I still, I don't want to say goodbye. Even today, I can't say goodbye. And that's why I spent these 38 years keeping her alive. On July 29, 1985, one-year-old Penny Tui Taputoro suffered a serious head injury while she was in the care of her babysitter, Kathleen Smith. She was rushed to hospital, but died a week later. He said that she had passed, and so we just, we took her in our, I took her in my arms, and, and they, they took her, took all the, the gadgets off her, and, and I just held on to her. It was just one of the hardest things I ever had to face in my life. To see my daughter pass before me. <laughs> Kathleen Smith said she was playing with her three-year-old son and Penny Tui in the lounge of this Danny Virk home on that morning in 1985 when something terrible happened. It's a long time since we've uh, come back here and just the memories ain't great. I don't know if I'm scared to look them. This was where our daughter passed. They had her last, last time of life. Okay, I don't want to look at this. It's too hard. Mm. The story that, well, that she gave us, um, that I remember was that um, she had picked up our baby, or picked up Penny Tui by the legs and swung her around in the lounge. And she was too heavy and she threw her up in, into the wall, up against the wall. But that apparently wasn't the only accident that day. Smith said that after hitting the wall, Penny Tui was crying, but conscious and able to walk. She gave the child a bath. Then, after leaving the bathroom to get some clothes for Penny Tui, she heard a bang. And so when she came back, she found her under the water. And then she lifted her up. And um, she dropped her on the floor. And then she picked her up to try and revive her. And then, um, I guess for me, it was just like shock. It's like, what? <laughs> and no words, it's just kind of sat there and stunned. It's kind of like. That was the story that she gave, that was her truth at that time. And, and uh, I just couldn't believe it. Despite conflicting evidence and suspicions about Smith's story, a coroner's inquest in 1986 heard that the police had concluded Penny Tui's death was an accident. My brother just said to me, there's something that we're gonna have to bear as a family for a long time. and and. I left it at that. I said, well, I can't do nothing. But as the years went by, Gerald Tapotoro couldn't let it go. Because it never went away, I mean, Penny was always, always in my thoughts. I suppose for me, me personally, when I was in church and, uh, and everyone gives, you know, new, new believers, you give your testimony on your life. But every time I got to Penny, I, I couldn't get through it. I couldn't get past it. And I just said, Some, I have to do something. You know, uh, what can I do? I didn't know what to do. I just said, I have to do something. In 2018, after obtaining the coronial file, Penny Tui's whanau asked police to reopen their investigation. Six months later, Smith was re-interviewed by a detective and changed her story. She said that while playing with Penny Tui on her knee, she'd shaken her. She described seeing the child's eyes roll back in her head. 
Then she dropped her. Smith said she didn't know then about the dangers of shaking a baby. And what had started out as fun turned into a tragedy. With the new version of events, the Crown solicitor said Smith could be charged with manslaughter, provided the medical evidence from 1985 was intact. But police found it had been destroyed less than two years earlier. It was a devastating blow to Penny Tui's family. I felt um, partly my fault by, by not doing something earlier, by not you know, pushing and, and finding out, you know, getting things done way back. Um, if only I had done that, all that stuff would be still with us. Nearly four decades after Penny Tui's death, her whānau remained stricken with grief. Her parents blamed themselves for what happened. I was her mother. I should have been caring for her. I was just too busy working. And uh, I learned a hard lesson for that. So I guess um, it was easy for me to just say that I'm responsible, not that person or those persons. Um, I should have had her in my care, but I chose to go to work and place her in care of someone that I trusted. I have to live with that, and I will live with that, and I have. And, and it's, you still hold that view that you, you're in part responsible for? Absolutely, absolutely. I blame no one else but me, yeah. I felt that I lived, as a father that I had let her down. It was my role to protect her, to keep her safe. But I didn't, I didn't do it. So I don't deserve to be happy. I sure you don't deserve to be happy. You know, Penny Tui's passing changed our lives. It, it really, um, for our parents, just how they were as a couple, you know, it really impacted them. And for Dad Papa to carry it, not only emotionally, but physically, you know, it really weighs on him physically and his health. And, and, you know, he's still very as heartbroken today as he was 38 years ago, you know. And so that's the toll, and we see that. And now mm. our children see that, and they really mm. feel for their papa, you know. They're heartbroken for him because of the loss that he has, and they want to help him, we all do, but we know that until he gets the truth, he's, he's not going to be able to, to move forward. You know, the guilt that our parents carry the suffering. And the suffering, and, and that's not okay. It's unfair. It's unfair, and she's allowed them to carry that for 38 years. Despite Kathleen Smith's recent admission, Penny Tui's whānau still don't feel like they know exactly what happened inside that Danny Burke home in 1985. Penny Tui didn't have a voice. She was just starting to speak, just starting to do the things that an 18 month old does. She couldn't cry out that she was hurt. And, and I didn't feel it as a mother. I should have felt it. I should have felt her pain. Because mothers and, you know, the bonding that we had. I'm not interested in, in, in looking for uh, being angry at her and uh, uh, taking her to court or whatever. That's not my issue. My issue is that uh, I gave you my daughter. I gave you our daughter. I gave you the, you know, the love of our life, the star. I gave, it, I gave it to you. You took her away from us. We don't know how, and all we want is what happened. That's all I want. Going to court and all, that's not going to bring it back. But knowing the truth will give us the freedom to move forward without feeling that pain. It's not about revenge. It never has been. 
because I took ownership at the beginning. It's about bringing that to an end so that we can have peace and move forward.